Have you ever asked yourself the question on what is the fastest possible ship that you can build in the game through practical means? Neither have I. We're gonna do one anyway, because how fast can we go? Turns out, it's pretty darn fast. So we're gonna build a new design. Let's uh, build a new Corvette, and this is going to be a wonderful Speedy Boy. Speedy Boy, Speedy Boy, Speedy Boy. Oh man, the Speedy Boy is gonna be amazing. Uh, let's assign a section. Always go with the Interceptor, even though it doesn't really add anything. It just gives us some slots. Let's save this, auto-complete this design. How fast is this? 163. It's slightly faster than the other one. Okay, so, so what do we do now? Well, we have uh, we have finished our design here. Let's save this, 163. But as you may have noticed, the speed has gone down. It was 169 before. Let's let's tech up a little bit. We go to the end game and see how much speed we can get out of the ship. All right, we've maxed out our tech. We're looking pretty good here. We got jump drives. We got zero point reactors tachyon sensors and a whole bunch of other cool stuff all of a sudden 316 that right there is a number that's looking hot twice as fast as the default speedy boy that right there is uh is pretty darn good can we do better than this though well let's try and turning it red turning red sadly does not do anything still 315 oh man that is that is so upsetting how can we improve this well as you can see we don't actually have the best possible modules available. And that's something that we need to do something about. So, first of all, let's add some thrusters. Ah, yes. Dark matter thrusters. 394. It's getting there. It's getting there. Side jump drive? Hmm. It does take up a little bit of power. And, in case you didn't know, for every unit of power we use, we could get a bonus. If we actually hover over our speed, you can see excess power, 1.8%. We can do better than that. Let's actually not give the ship a hyperdrive at all. 396. Terrible sensors. Better reactor. 400. Now we're getting there. Tell you what, let's strip everything off of this boat except for the advanced afterburners. Because it gives us 20%. 403. Man, we're looking very good here. It, it's it's a Corvette. It has no guns. It is super fast. It's got an afterburner on it. But well, we can do better than this. Oh, yes. We can definitely do better than this. Introducing the pre-cognitive uh, co cognitive interface. Sublight speed. 20% on the swarm variant. 435. And there we have it. The Speedy Boy. As I already mentioned, 435 speed. Thrusters. Combat computers, advanced afterburners, excess power, 7.1%. That's the kind of stuff that I like. That's looking pretty good. Rank regular, doesn't really impact things all that much. But the speed, oh my, it is, it is hauling ass. Look at that, it goes so fast. Just ignore the fact that I'm, I'm running the game on fastest. But uh, yeah, even then, it's just zooming around let's go and add a little edict here called and i need to look it up exotic gases as a fuel last 11 years sublight speed plus 15 percent 500 500 speed on a single corvette oh yeah it's uh it's already looking really good here nice and fast sure we don't have an ftl drive on we could probably add an ftl drive on it just in case just to make it a little bit more useful you know piracy and all that stuff but we can do better than this. We can do much better than this. Allow me to illustrate. So we've activated all of our traditions. All of them. Most importantly, supremacy. Why supremacy? Because war doctrines. Oh yes. War doctrines will make our already a bubbly boat of uh, about, well, uh, about 500, 500 feet speed. A little bit faster. A little teensy, teensy little bit here. So let's go to our war doctrines and uh, add rapid deployment. Sublight speed, speed plus 25%. Oh, that one right there. That one right there is 609. We can ramp this one right up here. Let's quickly build ourselves a strategic coordination center. Why a strategic coordination center, you ask? Well, let's just... Uh, 
If we build a strategic coordination center, it will do the following. It will give us a sublight speed bonus of 5%. But that's only on the first stage. On the second stage, it will give us 10%. And then on the final stage, 15%. Most excellent. How fast are we now? 674. Now, you may think that at this stage, there's not a lot of stuff that we can add here to our uh, this, speedy boy this, ship. This is not because okay. uh, it is already this pretty damn fast. Turns now. out, we can do more. Oh, yes, we can do more. Let's take a look at a little, little, uh, little bit of a look at what sort of events we can do. Now, here is the event I was talking about. It is part of the Adrift Chain. Now, the Adrift Chain adds the possibility to repurpose a very special ship into a science vessel. The science vessel class. However, do you really want to take a single ship over a galactic-wide enhancement of ship speed by 10%? Hell yeah, we do! Let's go and take a look here. Enhance ship speed for the rest of the game by 10%. And that basically means that our ship now goes 718 speed. But that's not it. Let's go even faster. So this is our list of available admirals. Oh yeah, I, you can see where this one is going. Admirals allow for a lot of very interesting modifiers. And a lot of them involve speed. Now, there's a ton of traits that you cannot get normally within the game on one general or admiral in this particular case. But it doesn't mean that for the sake of science, we can play around with it. So this guy is uh, is adaptable. I like him. There we go. So it doesn't actually do anything. It's uh, it makes uh, it makes the fleet a little bit better in terms of uh, leadership gain and all that stuff. Doesn't really have all that much impact. Maybe later in the game. Let's give him. Let's give him a little bit of strength. Oh boy, gale speed, sublight speed plus twenty percent. Yeah, that's that's one of the better ones. Oh boy, eight hundred and five speed. Now we're talking, but we can do it in fast. Oh boy, the scout trait, sub light speed, plus 10%. Ah, oh, 848. 848, we're almost there. I, I can feel it, I can feel it. I can feel that we're almost there. And he is now aggressive. Ooh, sub light speed, plus 10%. That's the good stuff right there. How fast is our, sh how fast is our, fast is our fleet now? 892. Horizon Signal has arguably the best trait for making ships faster in the game, which is foredoomed to a rendezvous. What does for do what does foredoomed to a rendezvous even do, you ask? Well, it is actually quite simple. Foredoomed to a rendezvous, sublight speed plus 25%. Oh yes. We are now 1001. 1,001 uh, ship speed. That right there is pretty darn crazy. But, there's more. <laughs> I wish I wish I could stop at this point, but we've, we've, we've gone down the rabbit hole so far that we may as well keep on stacking. Keep on stacking those percentage bonuses. Because at this point, there is something that we can do. We can interact with the Shroud. Yes. We can interact with the Shroud and ask for a boon. A boon has been this, uh, bestowed on us. And we are not even psionic. Out of nowhere, we have gone into the Shroud and we're like, Hey, could, could we get a speedy bonus for one of our ships? And the creature is in the Shroud. Said only one thing. Hell yeah! Have a 40% bonus to your ship speed! Boon of the Shroud for 60 months. Alright, let's take a look. 1175. 1175. At this point, we are at the most logically, most practical, fastest ship that you can build. It doesn't really go faster than this. Sure, you, have, you can put a hyperdrive on this ship. There is a certain practical availability because, as you may know, ships have to go from system to system and go across. But Corvettes, in particular, have an impact on piracy suppression. So for every single Corvette that you have, you'll have piracy suppression in that system. And that works only if the Corvette moves from system to system. The piracy suppression is not applied to weapons or anything like that. That means that you can build a super fast ship 
and move them around. I'm basically suppressing pirates without any issues. You don't need any guns. You don't need any shields. You don't need any sensors. Just a dark matter reactor, dark matter thrusters, uh, pre-cognitive interface, the swarm variety, and advanced afterburners. Practical. Not really. Is it fun? Oh, yes. But now... Now we're going to get into the realm of the impractical. It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? So if you've ever played any D&D, there's a system called the Multiclass. Now we have definitely multiclassed our Admiral. Ever so slightly, ever so slightly. We sent him out on a mission across the stars to get new traits. And I will illustrate to you which, illust which of these delightful traits he's gotten. Now, of course, we still have the bases. Gale speed, aggressive... Uh, for Doom to a rendezvous, which is always interesting, but that just, just it's not the end of it. Because on his journeys, he has slain a dragon. A slain a dragon. Got a we got a trade out of that. Dragon Slayer. Sup light speed. Plus ten percent. And a bonus to fire rate. But that not doesn't really matter on our Corvettes anyway, because we don't have guns. And we have the Great Khan. Yes, that's right. Our Admiral went out there. Found himself a bunch of tribals, worked his way all the way up to the top, and became the Great Khan. Sup light speed, plus 20%, as well as a whole slew of additional traits, which are, are going to potentially be useful in the future as well. Then, after that, he had a little bit of a religious epiphany, because he decided to go for, well, not so much a, a religious epiphany. He went out beyond the vast reaches of space to find the Praetorians. Yes! He found the Praetorians, became one of them, probably made it with a queen or something like that. Became a Void Hunter. Sublight speed, plus 20%. Then, after that, uh, well, let's put it this way. Uh, he went out into uh, the magical worlds of the Shroud. Now, we already have the, the boon of the Shroud, 40% bonus to speed. But, he decided to get a bit of a stutter. After talking to the Unbidden, they wanted to eat him, so he started his way out of there. Got himself a sublight speed bonus, 20%. It's not bad, not bad at all. And then finally, after reaching out to distant stars, he found themselves inside of a giant space whale. Carved himself out of it, hunted the beast, and got the Hell's Heart trait. Yet another bonus to sublight speed, 10%. Um, and that in combination with our speedy boy Corvette that already has a base speed of 435, with of course all these uh, little modules on top of that. How fast is our ship right now? Well, with all those mods, with all the bonuses, with our policies, with our edicts, and all the traits all piled up on top of each other, 1523. I'm just going to let that sink in for a little bit. This ship goes 1,523 per day. <laughs> the fastest ship you can build in Solaris. That means that this ship can get across the galaxy in no time flat, doesn't eat gateways, doesn't eat wormholes, can traverse the Empire incredibly quick, can get to jump point to jump point, and purge pirates were never ne ever necessary. Even though it doesn't have guns, they are still scared shitless. Now, in order to put things into context, obviously we need to do a little bit of a test to see which one is actually the fastest ship of the bunch. And just to illustrate what the differences in speed are. Of course, we have our speedy boy with all the traits in the world attached. We got our normal speedy boy without any trade bonuses. And of course, the slow boy, which has got everything except for a side jump drive. Yes, I did add some jump drives to this because this is going to be a cross system challenge. So let's move up here and we are going to race the Reshell and see who gets there first. And let's just illustrate the differences in speed and this is also where we find out is whether or not speed actually has any impact on the game whatsoever maybe maybe similar to the wonders of evasion could be that there is a cap on speed like there is on evasion which is 90 percent 
And with the Speedy Boy, of course, we are rocking well over 1518. And that's only because we had the side jump drive to this. So we are going to move all ships individually to this particular system and see who arrives there first. So they are off. Oh, there's the first one. They're already on their way. Oh, wow, the Speedy Boy. Oh, holy shit. Okay, that's probably on fastest. Probably not the best idea. Man, the Slow Boy is really taking his time. And that's the slowest version of the ship. Okay, fair enough. Let's try that again. But this time on slow. However, oh, so far we've already noticed that the Super Speedy Boy is actually not all of that fast comparatively to the other ones. All right, they're off again. Oh, okay. That's a jump. Wow. They were not at the edge of the system. I think the game does not render the ships all that fast. As in, they have the speed bonus, but it's not illustrated in the game. They got to the edge of the system and jumped out before their actual model did. So now they're over here. The first one is already on the other side of the system at normal speed. Let's see when he jumps. I'm very curious about this. Like he's... He actually jumped. And then the second one... Jumps before he gets to the waypoint. Let's take, take a quick look here and where whether or not the... We can probably already see where the original one is. It's probably already arrived. There he is. The real question is, does the slow boy go all the way to the edge of the system and then jump? Yes. Yes, he does. So we can learn a couple things from this. And this is my theory as of right now. The speedy boy and the super speedy boy. What is actually drawn in the game is not what you're actually seeing, or what is actually happening. If we go to uh, the speediest of boys, they can get to other places incredibly quickly, but they're just not drawn that f that quickly. One, like 114 days to get to the other, to, the, to that particular system. 114 days, right? That's so, this one goes all the way down here, and then this one. 300 days. Uh, which one did I set it? Yeah, so 175 days versus 114 days. We're seeing quite a lot of discrepancies here in terms of raw speed and what is actually possible. And I think we've stumbled upon something that is not intended. And that is that the ships that are rendered on screen are not representative of what is actually happening in terms of speed. Because our ships are jumping in the middle of the system. There is a cap on how fast models can move on the map. Or at least in system. But they're physically already here. Even though their ghost is over here. And that right there is something to think about. I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, take good care of yourselves, and as always, eat shutter.